Joining me today to talk about this and to take your calls and questions are Dr. Aliyah Khan, Professor of Medicine and Director of the Calcium Disorders Clinic at McMaster University in Hamilton, and Elizabeth Forsyth, who's been living with osteoporosis for several years. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank you, Carl. Dr. Khan, how big of a problem is this? It is a big problem, unfortunately, Carl. Approximately one in four women over the age of 50 will develop osteoporosis, and the numbers in men are one in eight. Wow, so people tend to think of it as a woman's uh, condition or disease, but in fact, it, it does uh, affect a significant number of men. In your own practice, what, uh, what is that balance like between men and women? I'd say looking at uh, who's sitting in my waiting room, I'd say maybe about a quarter of the population is male. Okay. We're now beginning to see more complex cases and family physicians are handling the vast bulk of osteoporosis. So I will see more complicated patients and men with more complications of their osteoporosis. Okay, when a patient comes to you, what, what do you do for them? Well, first of all, you know, we're going to do a complete history and physical, and then we'll investigate them to find out why they have osteoporosis, and then we'll discuss treatment options and make the decision with the patient as to what's best for that patient. Okay, and what are some of the common treatments? We've got a number of very important treatments for osteoporosis, and the big news is that now we have Fosavance covered on the drug benefit formulary. It's actually open listed, so people over the age of 65 will be able to get Fosavance, which is Fosamax, with vitamin D built in, in a single tablet once a week. Okay, we're gonna talk more about that in a moment, but first I wanna bring Elizabeth into the conversation. Hi. Welcome to the show. Now you're actually living with osteoporosis. That's correct. Right now. Mm -hmm. What has that been like for you? Uh, fine, for the most part. I live a normal day like anybody else. I don't feel any different. I don't have any pain, It's uh, it, but it's there. So I know I'm trying to take care of it now so that in the future that I won't have any of the difficulties commonly associated with osteoporosis. Okay. And what? Uh, how long have you actually, or when were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed in 2000, um, and so uh, what I've been doing since 2000 is taking all the precautions and exercising regularly uh, so that I can minimize uh, the, the, the severity and so that I can uh, ensure that it doesn't get worse okay. with the help of Dr. Khan, that is. So. <laughs> okay, very good. Oh, so uh, Dr. Khan is your doctor? Yes, she right. is. Okay. We've known each other since 2000, so I'm trying to be a good patient with Dr. Khan. I'm watching her very closely. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, yeah. Um, so, Elizabeth, have, have there actually been any impacts, any noticeable impacts on your life? Uh, no, other than I had to give up uh, weightlifting. I was doing powerlifting, and Dr. Khan suggested that I, I couldn't um, uh, lift as heavy a weights as I was used to, to, to uh, lifting. But I'm still doing everything else that I did before. I, I've really taken up walking. Um, that's one of the things that is really good for your bones. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying to walk at least an hour a day. Okay, well, Dr. Khan, if you can clarify, Elizabeth yes. just said she had to give up weightlifting lifting, but um, oftentimes you'll hear that uh, weight-bearing exercise is good for bones. So yes. where, where uh, how do you balance those two things out? Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Carl, because a lot of patients out there confuse weight-bearing exercise, and they think that this means going out and lifting dumbbells. And that's the worst thing you can do because you can develop a compression fracture in the spine. And really what we mean by weight-bearing exercise is walking because your body's weight is being borne by your skeleton and that will increase bone formation and it's a healthy, safe activity. And that's what, what we want all of our patients to be doing. Okay, and what about for our younger viewers and people who might want to prevent osteoporosis uh, to begin with? What kind, I mean, that kind of exercise, it sounds like, would be good for them. Yeah, absolutely. Being physically active is key. And as you know, we've done some studies in children. And we know that the kids who are sitting in front of the TV, watching TV, or in front of the computer, are going to actually have lower bone density than the healthy, active, active kids involved in sports. Right. So as an adult, as a child, as a teenager, we want everyone to be involved in sports and be physically active. Once you develop osteoporosis, however, the structure of the bone is not as strong as healthy, normal bone tissue. Right. And we do need to be cautious to make sure that we're not developing a fracture in the process of trying to improve the strength. Okay, now to develop that healthy bone to begin with, we have a, a limited window of time in, in terms of age to, to get that done. Can you just comment on that? 
Yeah, and again, that's a very important point that you raised, Carl. We recommend that everybody be physically active and try and reach the peak bone mass, which is genetically determined for them. And that is between the ages of 20 to 25, that we reach the max amount of bone that we're going to have throughout our life. Right. And then after that, we're going to start losing bone density. So being physically active, reaching our genetically determined peak bone mass is key. Right. And then after that, doing this uh, or exercising continually will help Absolutely. to slow the loss of bone as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, from a dietary point of view, yes. what are the current recommendations for vitamin D and, and all the other important minerals and uh, yeah. vitamins? And again, if you look outside, there's not much sun out there. And one of the problems that we have at our latitude is that about 60% of Canadians have inadequate levels of vitamin D. And that's a large number, 60%. Okay. You and I and Elizabeth are probably vitamin D, except Elizabeth, I know she's not vitamin D insufficient. Right. But you and I are probably vitamin D insufficient. And this is why it's very important that we take in adequate amounts of vitamin D. Yep. The recommendations are if you're over 50, you need 1,000 units of vitamin D. If you're under 50, you need 400 international units of vitamin D. And one glass of milk only has about 100 units of vitamin D. So you'd have to drink a lot of milk or... Eat um, fish. Eat fish, okay. Eat fish, like a healthy piece of salmon will give you about 400 international units of vitamin D. And beyond that, you need to take calcium, you need to take vitamin D supplements. Okay, and of course, calcium is another important mineral when we're talking about bone health. Absolutely, and the calcium requirements are over the age of 50, 1,500 milligrams a day, and under the age of 50, it's about 1,000 milligrams a day. Okay. So calcium and vitamin D are the key building blocks for ensuring that we're maintaining healthy bone tissue. Okay, and can can you overdose on, on these uh, supplements? Is that a dangerous Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Yeah, you see. can definitely overdose, but you need to take very large doses of vitamin D. You need more than five to 10,000 units a day wow. before you're going to have too much vitamin D, which could drive your blood calcium high. And it's unlikely you'd, you'd get that high unless you were really exactly. going overboard. Okay, well, we're going to talk more about prevention and treatment and all those good things. But first, uh, we want to remind our audience that Top TV is interactive, so call us now with your questions, your comments, and your personal stories. Now here are the question, the uh, numbers to call. Within the GTA, you can dial 416-872-CP24. That's 416-872-2724. Or from outside the area, call us toll-free at 1-888-863-CP24. You can fax us at 416-593-6397. Or if you're on the internet, you can send your emails to talktv at citynews.ca. And now it's time for a short break here on Talk TV. We'll be taking your calls as soon as we come back, so please call us right now. Tonight on 